All right, folks, let's talk about uh, the issue of science and technology. All we've heard in the last several years, the importance of uh, STEM education. When you look at where we are going in society with technology and the jobs of the future, uh, it is all about STEM, STEM, STEM. But you also need to have policymakers uh, who are putting folks in position to be able to access those jobs. And so Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson uh, of Dallas, she is the chair of the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology. And she joins us right now on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Congresswoman, how are you doing? Okay. Glad to see you. Uh, and also, I still have, uh, my, of course, my home in Dallas, right. uh, where, uh, so uh, I'm one of your constituents. I, uh, I know. I, I'm, I'm always mindful of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, my parents, who are very active uh, with the polls and everything there, and so uh, they, they, they living in my house down there, so they are certainly staying busy in your district. And you look just like both of them. <laughs> well, that's, well, well, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. so, so, let's just talk about uh, this. And so, first of all, five African Americans are chairing committee. So folks who who don't really understand the political process. Explain to them, uh, you know, what that means, uh, having five uh, CBC members who are chairing uh, House committees. That's really extraordinary because when you chair a committee, you set the agenda. Of course, every committee uh, has um, working documents of what they are responsible for and what agencies of which you have oversight. But you have the freedom to set the agenda to address the issues within the jurisdictions at all times. That's one of the disadvantages we've had for the last eight years. We couldn't set an agenda. We couldn't bring up subjects to put on uh, the agenda to discuss. A good example of that is climate change in my committee mm -hmm. uh, because we had nothing to do with setting the agenda. We now have not only that responsibility to set the agenda, we've got to rise to the occasion of making sure that it's carried out. We have to make sure that they are good witnesses from wherever you can get them in the world, um, depending on your subject matter. In my subject matter, it is international. Uh, we deal with the National Science Foundation, which is all of the basic research, which can be at research labs or universities, and at Texas A&M is one of the universities that gets some of the research money. And so we have all that oversight. We have the oversight of the environment through NOAA, the predictions, NASA, uh, the, all of the technology, Department of Energy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's our responsibility not only to do uh, the legislation that goes through those agencies, but also the oversight. What a, when you talk about climate change, I mean, obviously, that's that's a huge issue. The White House released a report uh, in November, uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving, uh, talking about uh, what really the changes need to happen. And then you had Donald Trump who goes, ah, I don't believe it, even though it was a report that was released by his own White House. Uh, and so how do you deal with a party that continues to deny what's happening with climate change because for them... It's all about, oh, if the, 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 the way to stop anything in America is say, oh, it's going to hurt jobs, it's going to hurt the economy. And then you have the EPA, where you had Scott Pruitt, who, of course, who left, uh, just whacking everything that the Obama administration put in place when it came to trying to protect the environment. Right. Well, we hope to reverse most of that. And we are not extremely optimistic that this president might sign all of it. But we have a responsibility to be responsible and to deal with the issues and the scientific findings as we know that they're available. The last six years, we spent most of our time in denial uh, and really going back and trying to even undo some of the research that's been decided for 25 years. Mm -hmm. But that is not the real history of my tenure on the committee. Uh, I've been, I was on the, I've been on the committee 26 straight years and it was only the last six that we went to that extreme. They changed chairs every six years. I've been ranking member eight years, going into this will be my 10th year when I finish this um, two years. But the charter of the committee has never changed. Mm -hmm. It really depends on the leadership and where it takes you. How do you use the, how do you, how do you use, or plan to use this uh, to drive a lot of those dollars to HBCUs uh, when it comes to technology? Because 
um, with the initiative of Reverend Jackson a couple of, several years ago, trying to publicly, um, you know, shame Silicon Valley. All of a sudden, they realized that there were black students who were going to HBCUs who were in, in science, technology, engineering, and math. So now all of a sudden, uh, some of them have created uh, partnerships with those HBCUs. How do you plan to leverage your power, this chair, to get them to do more of this? Well, historically, every time there was a bill, I made sure there was a portion, some kind of amendment that put them into uh, the network of that money. I also have challenged the National Science Foundation, who has great peer review, but most of those peers that come to do the review are not from historically black colleges. I've also had neighborhood and statewide meetings with black college presidents to talk about how they view their submissions. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we're seeing a little bit more. I've been out and visited a lot of the black colleges, but we still need to work on it because the peer review we had to review. Most of the peer reviews are PhDs from sometimes more than one PhD from different um, universities that mm -hmm. do not involve historically black colleges. But what is so critical is that we need the products from the historically black colleges. You know, we used to worry about affirmative action if we walked in a room and didn't see anybody that looked like us. Now it's not whether we see them or not, it's whether or not we have their brain power. Mm -hmm. In this country, where the minority populations are doing most of the growth, we need that brain power to remain uh, anywhere in a competitive world. Science has become so competitive worldwide, and most of the large countries are investing more now into scientific, scientific research than what we are doing mm -hmm. in this country. Under the Republican administrations, it's been very difficult. Uh, this is only the second one I've been under. I started out with Clinton, and we did well. Then we went with Mr. Bush, and it bankrupted the nation, and we couldn't continue to invest as much. Then we had President Obama who came in, took a nation that was in bankruptcy and turned it around and his economy is still showing up. But just as soon as the current president's economy shows up, we're going to see a big difference. But in the meantime, we've got to be ready for the competitive world, not just this country. And so we're looking at automation, autonomous vehicles, We've got to be able to compete with all of that. It does not require a PhD. Got it. A lot of that requires just community college level because we're looking at technology. Mm -hmm. And we're going to move from driving trucks from behind the wheel to driving trucks behind computers. All right, folks, back to our Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, let's talk about one of our partners, The Herbs Cleanse. In 2019, many folks, of course, are focused on their health, trying to get better, trying to look better, getting ready for the beach season. Other folks, of course, improving their golf game, all that sort of good stuff. And so they want to be able to uh, have a healthier uh, new year. So one of the ways to do that is the De Herbs Cleanse. Uh, it's something that I actually have been on. I started a couple weeks ago. So I have now uh, four more days, four more days. And so uh, it can certainly make a difference when it comes to losing weight, also giving folks uh, more energy as well, improving their overall uh, being. And so if you want to do that, this is what you can do. You can join those of us who are on it by going to dherbs.com and then use the promo code Roland. You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RollerMartinUnfiltered.com.